I see you. Crete, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to look for you right after this presentation. Um, so thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. How many of you have heard of Hedera? Okay, more than I thought. So that's good. Um, so I, I'm really going to be talking today a little all over the board from what is Hedera, the consensus algorithm, you know, our new EVM compatibility, smart contracts capabilities, uh, along with what is the foundation and why are we different. So with that, let's dive right in. So, uh, you know, we are the foundation, we are really a venture capital firm in a foundation's body. So while we're not necessarily taking equity, we are making grants into projects to build the ecosystem around our technology. What is our enterprise strategy and what are some of the real world use cases that are being built on Hedera? So the foundation today is I think about why did I get into crypto? I've been a long time enterprise oriented guy, started my career as a developer in languages that I know don't exist and that you may have never heard of anymore. Um, but it was really around this idea, the fourth industrial revolution, right? Everything becoming automated and digitized. You know, from the initial steam engine to, you know, as you think about people and the movement of them, right? Everything is getting digitized, products, services, chains, etc. But what I really appreciated about where we are right now is the evolution of the internet. It became the internet of people, the internet of things, and now the internet of value, right? So as economic models are being built in traditionally into this technology, and that's where I think this digital evolution is key, and it's why I did that and really kind of came out of retirement to do that. So our vision is to really incentivize groups of individuals. I look at it as entrepreneurs, dreamers, builders, to go build what it is that they see is the future of that, uh, of the next version of the internet. Today we're calling it Web3. You know, two years ago this really wasn't being called Web3. So we believe that the Hedera technology, the layer one resource, provides open, fair, and scalable technologies, and I'll tell you why. So our mission is to support the creation of these. And so I'll talk about how much money we've deployed in the ecosystem since the beginning of the year. It's been significant. You know, what, what's interesting about this is typically if you're running a product company, your first product is some widget, some mousetrap. You don't try to globally uh, deploy that. You try to focus on one geographic area, one product. You're not trying to do a bunch of products all at one time. The foundation Right? We've got an ecosystem. We're trying to do all of that. We're trying to do that in Singapore. We're trying to do that in the UK. We're trying to do that in, you know, name your remote parts of the world. And we're trying to do that across multiple fund types. So why are we a fund in a foundation's body? We had three goals when we set up the foundation. First was to grow the awareness of the HBAR economy and the Hedera ecosystem. It was a layer one great technology that not a lot of folks knew about. The second was to accelerate access. There were gaps in the technology that we knew we needed to incentivize builders to build so that we can make sure we had the connectivity to developer tools, to MetaMask, to other things that we needed so that people could have access to this technology. And then finally, we needed to increase commerce, right? At the beginning of the year, there really wasn't this NFT community on Hedera like there is today. And the community has taken the bull by the horns and really grown this significantly over the last nine months. In addition to that, we've got other use cases being used where commerce, marketplaces, tokenized assets, real estate assets that are getting tokenized, or TradFi getting tokenized on the network are happening. So we really focused it on six key funds. The first is the Crypto Economy Fund. This was a fund, it was $150 million, focused on on-ramps, exchange listings, wallet support, etc., so that we could get HBAR in the hands of as many people as possible because we're a proof-of-stake network. We want to make sure that that proof-of-stake, that network is secure. The second is what we're calling the Metaverse Fund. That was just a moniker that made it easy. It was originally the Consumer Engagement and Loyalty Fund. So as multiple brands, whether it's luxury brands, sports teams, it doesn't matter, are looking for unique ways to engage with their fans, this is where we've been investing. I've got one 
uh, example here uh, that I'll show you. It's a small video of something called the mall uh, in the metaverse. The second is, uh, the third is the Sustainable Impact Fund. These are really where we're focused on ESG initiatives. So, so many organizations are trying to help uh, different parts of the world be able to capitalize on carbon credits and carbon offsets to have zero footprint, <coughs> excuse me, into the planet. And then finally, the FinTech Fund. The FinTech Fund is a $50 million fund focused on stable coins, cross-border payments, and the like. This is where, if you've been following us, this is where we did the uh, ANZ announcement, who has built a stable coin on Hedera. We're partnering with Open Zeppelin. They ran this for 10 minutes, and it, just to test it out, and in 10 minutes did over $30 million. ANZ Bank, second largest, biggest bank in Australia, for those that may not know. Then we've got the Privacy and Female Founders Fund. As you think about identity and de decentralized identity, there's a lot of technologies that need to be built to make use of and make people feel secure about who is it, what is it that's happening on the network. Uh, and then finally, Female Founders Fund. These are where we just want to invest in technologies where uh, female founders exist, where females own at least 30% of the overall cap table. So these were the six funds. This is how we've deployed since the beginning of the year. Uh, this is now a little bit more than this. Over $350 million across 156 grantees. Now, if you do the math, that's about $2.2 million per grant. It's kind of a big number. Um, but there are a couple of big grants in here that skew it, grants that we have not announced publicly yet, um, but that are significant, con will be significant contributors to the elevation awareness of what we're doing at Hedera. So the enterprise strategy, you know, enterprises move slow, right? They do. This whole idea around digital transformation has been, you know, for the last five plus years, all these enterprises are trying to figure out how do I leverage things like cloud and SaaS. These are things that they, they haven't really focused on crypto. Now they're starting to focus on blockchain, distributed ledger technology. How does tokenization and cryptography really matter in my business? And so now enter Hedera. So this is the, the consensus algorithm is called Hashgraph. Okay, and so the Hashgraph uses a gossip protocol, gossip about gossip, that enables what's called virtual voting. So every single node knows how the other node votes and then can predict how the node is ultimately going to vote. Why is this really important? Well, because it's a leaderless system. There's no ability to go down on the network. There's no single point of failure as a result of this. So the consensus algorithm also has finality sub three seconds. So it's incredibly fast in terms of finality, um, and that's why we're seeing significant enterprises begin to adopt this. Another reason that we're seeing this is it's built for modular and scalable businesses. So while developers in our ecosystem, crypto-related, Ethereum-related, no solidity, a lot of the enterprise developers may not know that. So you know, our network services are written in JavaScript, Java, Go, et cetera. Though, like I said, we have deployed uh, EVM compatible, solidity-based smart contracts as of the beginning of the year, and a ton of APIs that can be leveraged. A couple of things here in terms of the services running on the network. One is the consensus service. That's the Hedera consensus service showing basically the immut immutable record of the transactions that are taking place place on the network. The token service is simply that fungible and non-fungible tokens. We've got several of our governing council members that are building uh, some fungible tokens as a result of this. I think what's important though here is not just what we have, but in the cost of these transactions. So there's fixed fee capabilities here. So a Hedera consensus service costs one one thousandth of a penny denominated in U.S. dollars. A token service costs one-tenth of a penny, denominated in U.S. dollars. So this idea of significant gas fees doesn't exist. More importantly, this is why enterprises care, because they can predict and model out when they build an application with a set of transaction types, they understand how much it's going to cost to deliver that service. 
And then finally, the smart contract service, to deploy Solidity smart contracts in a decentralized, DAP-oriented way. I just spoke about this. I've got four or five minutes left. The governance. So we've got the way that we govern the network is through 39 council members. These council members include some listed here, LG, Avery, Denison, Google, ServiceNow, WorldPay, FIS, Tata Communications. If you go down to um, Times Square right now, LG is advertising something called the LG Art Lab. That is exclusively built on Hedera. I'll talk about it in one of our use cases. But these folks, these organizations that are multinational, they govern the network. They manage the treasury, the 50 billion tokens that were minted on the network. They manage the HIP process or the Hedera Improvement Proposal process, which is all of the roadmap items that are getting worked on. Um, they give input to that. Um, and most importantly, why, how are we able to get these big organizations? And this is, this is kind of the bittersweet aspect of doing things in crypto. We ha we are, these are all permission nodes, right? So this idea of permissionless nodes doesn't exist on our network today, largely because these organizations are concerned that if we can run permissionless nodes, and let's say it's in a bad state, then they put their brand, their legal entities at risk. Now that said, we are looking at ways to include permissionless nodes uh, in the near future, um, you know, so that we can continue to scale the adoption of what we're doing, but this is the first place we started. What does enterprise grade look like in the real world? And I'm just going to talk about use cases. So I talked about specifically the ANZ Bank, Stablecoin, Open Zeppelin integration. You're going to continue to see that evolve in a big way. Um, but this is one where the LG Art Lab, this is where if you own an LG TV, specifically their OLED TVs, which are their picture TVs, I don't know if you've seen them, it makes it look like a piece of art hanging above your fireplace and the picture can change. Um, they're incredibly high resolution graphics. They partnered with an artist called Barry X Ball. Last week we were here, we did a VIP event of about 300 different investors and artists. He's selling these as NFTs. So now integrated into every OLED TV is a, an LG wallet built on Hedera where you can buy these NFTs. So a unique idea that is taking shape by one of the largest electronics companies in the world exclusively built on Hedera. This is a video of a company that we've partnered with called Metaverse. This is the uh, virtual mall. So they've got, uh, it's called The Mall, in fact, and they've got a new way for brands to engage as you're walking through a mall. Unfortunately, I couldn't get a video of all the brands that they've signed up that you and I know uh, because this isn't live yet, but this is the environment that they've built uh, with a set of brands. They've got a hundred different floors, um, whereas most malls are limited to two or three floors. Um, and so to meet, shop, and play at the mall, interesting concept. Uh, I'm hopeful that it works um, given some of the brands that have signed up, but we will see. Um, Saucer swap. So one of the things that we've done specifically when the foundation got created was focus a lot more on DeFi and a lot more on native DEXs. Saucer swap was the first native DEX, uh, an incredible success story. We've got other DEXs coming live in the next couple of months. Uh, just like we also have from a council membership perspective, we've got three new council members that are going that have been approved by the membership committee of the current council. So you're going to see more and more global brands being added to govern the network and most importantly build use cases on this network. So the last one is in the Sustainable Impact Fund. This is Dovu. This is effectively, if you start left to right, how farmers can leverage the carbon in their soil, dig a little deeper. They can then look at rewarding farmers so they can take action to maximize it. Those credits can be stored in a specific, with a specific topic ID on Hedera. They can then create and mint a token. That token can then be sold, and then the farmer gets some sort of credit. We've got others that are harnessing methane gas from cattle um, and then marketing those uh, NFT tokens to make sure they're able to buy carbon credits and carbon offsets so that 
they have zero footprint uh, into the world. So we continue to invest. We've got others like Water Ledger that we've done out of this fund to continue to make the world a better place. So with that, I think that was my last slide. And I'm, I've got 11 seconds. Over. Over. I, I, it's already counted. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you.